Welcome to Training Industries Quarterly Easing, Fall Edition 2011 podcast of the article Improving Training Thinking Like a Game Developer by Carl M. Kopp. If trainers and training developers want to engage learners, help them retain knowledge, and encourage them to practice, then they should approach the design and delivery of training from the mindset of a game developer. Game developers routinely create games that are played for hours, where the players are completely immersed in the game situations, doing the same actions over and over again until they are successful. The success and appeal of games is no accident. In fact, a careful and deliberate design strategy underlies most game development efforts. Even a seemingly simple game, like the widely popular Angry Birds game, where players shoot birds at pigs hiding in all kinds of structures, was not just whipped up in someone's basement. The Angry Birds development project was a purposeful project created by a game development company with lots of experience. Rovio, the company that created Angry Birds, located in Finland, had previously published 52 other games and created 16 original games. The success of Angry Birds was carefully planned and executed by a 12-person team who spent eight months carefully studying the iPhone application ecosystem and developing a game that would appeal to a wide range of players. The team wanted to make sure they knew what would work and what would not work. As part of the process, they refined the game many times before it was released. It took a great deal of research, engineering, and prototyping to make it a success. In the same manner, trainers and developers of training need to carefully consider game elements and how they can be purposefully and successfully integrated into curriculum, courses, and e-learning modules. Adding a point system, badges, or rewards to a training class or online module does not mean an engaging and impactful learning experience has been created. Instead, the design of the instruction must be rethought from a game developer's perspective. Game Developer Techniques Game developers have a number of techniques which, when applied to the creation of learning events, provide an engaging and enriching experience for learners. Three such techniques are start with a challenge, focus on replayability, include a story narrative. Let's look at each of these techniques and see how they can be applied to the design and delivery of instruction. Start with a challenge. Games immediately immerse the player in a challenge or a problem. When you first start a game, you begin with a small challenge. Maybe it's moving from point A to point B, or aligning the falling pieces, or it's slaying an easily slayable dragon. And then, as your skills progress, you move on to bigger challenges. Whatever the challenge is, there is little didactic instruction telling the player what to do. As soon as the game starts, the player immediately must act and react within the environment. Unfortunately, with traditional classroom and even online training, instruction starts by providing a bulleted list of all the elements that need to be learned. The trainer carefully explains each item and what it means. The concepts and points are described and then, if there's time left, learners are given a case study or role play. So think like a game developer and start class or the e-learning module with a problem the learner has to solve immediately before any instruction. Tell the learner something like, You are a manager, and an employee has informed you that a co-worker has been leaving work early for the past month. What do you do? As the learner tries to figure out what to do, provide guidance and assistance. Be supportive of the learners, but only provide information when the learner encounters an obstacle to solving the problem. Create the need for the learner to seek or require the information you want them to learn. This creates motivation and aids retention because people like a challenge, and they'll remember how they solved the challenge much more easily than remembering an abstract bulleted list titled, Five Things to Do If You Suspect an Employee Is Leaving Work Early. Focus on replayability. When game developers create a game, they don't want someone to play it once and discard it. They craft it so players want to play it over and over again. To encourage what is called replayability, The developers add hidden treasures within the games, so a player will play it a second time to find desired items. They randomize events and sequences, so the game is never the same twice, and they create different game levels so that once a game is mastered at the basic level, it can be replayed at a more difficult level. The technique of including multiple levels is highly effective from a training perspective. The technique of including multiple levels is highly effective from a training perspective. 
because not all learners are at the same level. Including multiple levels provides different entry points into the instruction. It accommodates various levels of knowledge with one program if developed online and provides a natural sequence of learning if delivered in a classroom setting. Learners know they will move from one level of knowledge to the next, and moving through levels can be motivational for a learner. One way to create levels, for example, is to create an online simulation that has three different levels a practice level, a typical level, and a challenge level. In the first level, the learner can dive right in and begin to operate the simulation, but is provided with guidance and prompting if he or she does something wrong. A window will appear or the learner might not be allowed to press the wrong button. The simulation acts as an instructor correcting mistakes and guiding the learner through the process. In the next level, the typical level, the learner is given a challenge that is typical of what he or she encounters on a daily basis, but the simulation doesn't provide any guidance or feedback. The learner only finds out how he or she did at the end. In the final level, the challenge level, the simulation provides uncommon problems or situations that the learner must address. This level is difficult and forces the learner to apply everything he or she has learned to deal with an atypical problem. The idea is that if the learner can understand how to troubleshoot or deal with adversity in the learning process, those skills will transfer to the job. The same three level techniques can be used in a classroom where an instructor provides the learners with a walkthrough of a process or procedure and then allows them to attempt it on their own and then provides a challenge for the class to work on as a final in-class exercise. Provide a story narrative. While not all games have a story narrative behind them, storytelling is an essential part of many games. While simple games like tic-tac-toe may not be guided by a story, a number of games have more story behind them than you may think. Chess uses terms like knight, king, and bishop to evoke a story of two warring factions. The kid's game, Capture the Flag, has a similar underlying story. And you can also become a king in checkers. Simple video games like Bejeweled even have a loose story associated with them. The underlying story becomes even more evident when you hear the original name of the game, Diamond Mind which evokes the story of someone mining away looking for jewels, and Missile Command, the 1980s arcade game, turned dash and dotted lines into a fight to save your civilizations and cities from an unseen enemy launching missiles. Today, many games include rich narratives. One such example is the Uncharted series created for the PlayStation. In each game of the series, a story is told of an adventurer. Nathan, Nate, Drake, who is searching for lost artifacts and historical treasures in a manner similar to Indiana Jones. The game story includes character development, plot twists, and other common narrative conventions. In an instructional setting, stories are a natural tool for trainers and online instruction. A story provides the context in which the learning needs to be applied. It provides a method for the learner to richly encode the content in their memory to aid in both recall and retention. Embedding facts into the body of a story is an effective method for teaching facts. Studies indicate that humans have a natural tendency to remember facts more accurately if those facts are contained within a story, rather than presented merely as a list of facts to be memorized. When presenting facts to be memorized, consider using a story or narrative to present the information, and use stories to help learners understand how to apply the learning to their work situation. Conclusion Games are engaging, immersive, and motivational. Unfortunately, training programs do not always receive the same accolades. As training professionals, we should borrow the best elements of game design and incorporate those elements into our instruction. By using the elements of storytelling, replayability, and challenging the learners, we can create instruction that allows the learner to practice the application of skills over and over again until they achieve success. This is the power of using game design thinking in the development of instruction. Carl M. Kopp is a professor of instructional technology at Bloomsburg University in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, and a consultant to many learning organizations. Takeaways. Trainers and designers of training can learn a lot from playing video games. Understanding how video game developers engage and entertain players will help trainers and developers of training to create engaging learning experiences.
Start the instructional process with a challenge. Engage learners immediately by giving them a problem to solve. Provide multiple levels in the instruction you design and deliver. Not all learners are at the same level, so give them different entry points into the instruction. Create a narrative for your instruction. Stories aid learners in retention and recall. You've been listening to Improving Training, Thinking Like a Game Developer by Carl M. Kopp. For more podcasts and articles like this, visit www.trainingindustry.com. Thanks for listening. I'm John Sherlock.